I will only say that I do not know if human misery can be portrayed with more realism than to see so many people leaving in such confusion with the cries of women and children so burdened by obstacles and difficulties. And truth be told, if these people have sinned, then they are paying for it dearly. Don Juan de Austria, letter of 6 November 1570. Hello again. Let's continue analyzing Cervantes' masterpiece. Chapter 55 offers poetic and political justice for the governor who has refused to help his friend. Note another absurdly redundant title. On the things that happened to Sancho on the road and others which simply have to be seen. The important emphasis on vision is important. Remember the cave allegory in Plato's Republic and the metaphor of the ass as a human being in Apuleius' The Golden Ass. The brutal irony is that Sancho Panza now shows great concern for his ass, which grows human in this episode, whereas he has just repressed his natural sympathy for his neighbor. Let's deal first with the Apulian aspect of the episode. Sancho Panza's concern is constant, and the ass is a fluid figure. When he falls into the pit, Sancho Panza complains, especially when he heard his gray painfully and tenderly moaning. Sancho Panza speaks about himself in the third person, and uses a suggestive clausimus, Sancho Panza never abandoned his ass, nor his ass abandoned Sancho Panza. He helps the ass stand up and feeds it, and he addresses it as if he could understand. Think of it this way. The ass is Ricote, and Cervantes models Sancho Panza's strange concern for his ass after those characters in Apuleius' novel who praise Lucius the ass, who's really a human being. O oh, friend and companion of mine, how poorly have I paid you for your good services. Forgive me, for I promise to place a crown of laurel atop your head, such that you will seem nothing less than a poet laureate, and to double your feed rations. Sancho Panza makes sure his ass can move through the pit. He made room so that the ass could easily pass through. When Don Quixote appears at an opening above, Sancho Panza specifies that his ass is with him. And according to the narrator, and there's more, for it seems no less than the ass understood what Sancho said. For at the moment he began to bray with force, such that the whole cave reverberated. Did you know? Plato's cave allegory is found at the beginning of Book 7 of the Republic. When Sancho Panza is freed, he first makes sure his ass is comfortable. He refuses to go up to greet the Duke without first seeing the gray accommodated in the stable. If you still think Sancho Panza's ass is just a comical detail, then you're a Philistine. But you're in good company, because most of Cervantes' editors and commentators agree with you. Now, let's look at the episode allusions to Plato's cave. The context of the episode is darkness. Sancho Panza travels in the night somewhat dark and gloomy, and he falls into a deep and most dark chasm. Interesting here are the old structures that frame the hole. It's as if Sancho Panza has fallen into a primitive darkness out of which all civilizations attempt to escape. Or perhaps he has fallen into that primitive darkness between two ancient civilizations at war. The latter seems possible because when Sancho Panza checks himself, like Don Quixote did after the Battle of the Brayers in chapter 27 of the first part, the former governor finds himself good, whole, and in Catholic health. Next, Sancho Panza contrasts his predicament with his master's I won't be as fortunate as my lord's Don Quixote of La Mancha when he descended and went down into the cave of that enchanted Montesinos. He spends the night in the pit. Day brings clarity and splendor, but Sancho Panza is still trapped. He spies a ray of sunshine and moves towards a confused spot of clarity at the other end of the cave. Midway through the episode, as we saw in the cave of Montesinos, and more recently in Don Quixote's concern for Rodriguez, the theme of purgatory returns. Quixotic Mission Chapter 55 of Don Quixote depends on a mix of allusions to which two classical authors? A. Plato and Apuleius B. Aristotle and Seneca C. Terence and Horns Correct answer, A, Plato and Apuleius. Sancho Panza shouts for help. Is there a Christian who can hear me? 
Don Quixote is prepared to rescue souls. If you're a soul doing penance, tell me what you want me to do on your behalf. There is humor here as Sancho Panza has to repeatedly insist that he's still alive. Don Quixote offers a hilarious citation of Catholic doctrine. If you are my squire, Sancho Panza, and you have died, so long as the devils have not taken you, and by the mercy of God you are in purgatory. Then our Holy Mother, the Roman Catholic Church, has enough intercessory prayers that can save you from the suffering in which you find yourself. Recall that Protestantism rejects this idea, and also recall Ricotta's ambivalence about his faith and the mockery of Catholic orthodoxy elsewhere in the novel. This is a big moment. The cave is also platonic to the degree that it is political. The episode begins with a political version of the Ubi stunt topic inherited from Cicero and popular during the Middle Ages. Sancho Panza. Who would have said that he, who yesterday saw himself enthroned as governor of an isle, given orders to his servants and his vassals, would today find himself entombed in a castle? Like the last Visigothic king, Rodrigo, Sancho Panza only finds snakes and toads in the pit. Remember Don Quixote's anecdote about Charles V and the Pantheon in Rome, in chapter 8 of the second part of Don Quixote. Has something figuratively pushed Sancho Panza from the cima, or peak of the dome into this cima, or pit? Sancho Panza himself says this is a political punishment, a sinner buried alive, an unfortunate, ungoverned governor. And once he escapes the pit, Sancho Panza asserts that he governed honestly, Neither did I have the time to take any bribes or charge any fees. I arrived naked, and naked I find myself now. I neither lost nor gained. To paraphrase Hamlet, the governor doth protest too much methinks. The narrator reports that to the duke plans to compensate Sancho Panza. He would arrange to grant him another office in his territory, one less onerous and more lucrative. Cervantes' innovation on Plato is that the cave also represents ethnic fusion. Sancho Panza claims Don Quixote would experience it as if it were the places of Galeana, alluding to the legend of a Moorish princess of Toledo who fell in love with Charlemagne. Moreover, at this moment, Benengeli intrudes and tells us how Don Quixote came across Sancho Panza's cave while out preparing for his joust. The narrator continues to weave together the political and ethnic symbolism of ass, cave, and light. At the cost of many people and much work, they raised the Grey and Sancho Panza out from that darkness and into the light of the sun. A student saw him and said, This is how all wicked governors should leave their governments, just like the sinner leaves the depths of the abyss, starving to death, pale and without a blanca to his name, as far as I can tell. Sancho Panza's version is similar, but more concise. I left. As I was saying, I left that isle without any other company than that of my ass. I fell into a chasm and I made my way through it until this morning with the light of the sun when I saw the way out. More cynicism appears in the Duke's plan to grant Sancho Panza another office and Sancho Panza's description of governing as a child's game, something like Hop Frog or Four Corners, like that game played by children when they shout, your jump and now give to me. I jump out of the government and I pass into the service of my lord Don Quixote. That's all for now. What do you think will happen next? Don't miss it. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.